Chris, how you doing, man? Nice to see oh, you, man. Sure. Nice to see you, man. <laughs> how you doing? What's going on? I'm awesome, man. I'm awesome, man. I'm really glad to have you here uh, with me uh, for this video we're making for YouTube, guys. And uh, I would like to introduce Chris uh, and tell you guys who's sitting here in front of you. Uh, I'll tell you why he came here and uh, what, what he does. So basically, I've known Chris since, I think, two years now. Each time we speak, I kind of, uh, I'm not that yeah. sure, man, but... Uh, I think we've known each other for a while, um, for I, I believe like two years, and uh, as I always say, yeah, you've helped me massively in the beginning of my journey, man. <laughs> when I was like really with my just first product starting somewhere in the like early early stages, and uh, I got a lot of value from you, man, from Amazon and I mean, Amazon value and also value on branding, which we're going to be speaking about today, and uh, on sales, man, a lot of good stuff. And uh, so basically what you do, man, is you're an Amazon seller, right? You're uh... we're, we're, pretty much, we're pretty much the same breed. We're, we're both Amazon FBA private label sellers. Is that what kind of brought us together in the, in the initial stages? And I think, yeah, it was like over two years ago, we connected on Facebook and then Dynamite went off and we, uh, we, we hit it off and now, uh, now here we are, bro. So, you know, it was, uh, there was one stage there was one stage where you actually sent me a screenshot on uh, on Amazon sales, and at yeah. that point you you actually sent me a screenshot, and it was more than the the month that I I had done. I was like, ah, I trained this guy too well, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, that was that was great to see. I think it was um it was like forty forty two thousand dollars, right? Uh, I think I think I sent you uh, a yearly screenshot or something, but it was pretty big. Yeah, it was. I think yeah, the, the monthly um, sort of revenue back then was, I can't remember the screenshot really, man, but it was pretty good. I was doing, I was more than happy with, uh, you know, sort of with what I've gotten for you for, you know, for your time and for the money that I've, you know, paid. I, I, that was awesome, man. That was awesome. And, you know, uh, well, we, we, we talk about like, we talk about the monetary value and, you know, the, the money that we can earn through Amazon, but more so, and this is the this is something we'll talk about more. You know, the actual financial figure, whether that be the revenue or profit you make, people people often look past that that figure and don't actually have a goal of what that means to them. So, you know, what I'm trying to say here in short is you've got the money coming in from Amazon and the other stuff you do with your consultancy, yeah. you've you've got a goal, what you do with that money, and that's what you're doing now, and that's in Thailand, that's traveling to these lush places all around the world. For some people, I spoke to a guy a few days ago, his goal was $10,000 or £10,000 mm -hmm. net profit per month on Amazon. I was thinking, that's the big goal, and while that's fantastic, is, is that going to help you achieve like what you want in life? Because his only goal was to quit the 9 to 5 so he can look after himself yeah. and his parents and more. So, you could probably do that with 2,000 or 3,000 pounds. You don't need 10 to really outreach yourself on that goal. And for you, like traveling to Thailand, I'm about to go to America, it's really not that expensive. So putting these huge financial goals on yourself and overwhelming yourself in the initial stages just isn't the way to do it. Look, at, look after yourself, replace your income from the Amazon stuff so you can quit your nine to five and then do as you wish. I think that's, that's often really overlooked. Yeah, it takes a while, you know. Uh, it's not that, as people say, you know, you get a... You can technically start with a thousand dollars. Like, you can technically, but... Uh, yeah. But it's... You, you have to invest more. Like, I've invested a lot of money into Amazon, even though I started earning from the initial amount that I, I have uh, sort of, you know, uh, started with, and my partner as well, we still have to add more money because we wanted to grow. But I wouldn't say that you need to jump in with uh, buying 5,000 pieces of a product and uh, definitely to start, because it's a new business, you know, sort of, uh, tactic because it's just like a way to earn money to it's just like some people you know they blog some people this Amazon FBA private label is a big system yeah. that you can master 
and you're just gonna study new things like shipping products from China or US, whatever, wherever you're sourcing, and uh, and eventually it's gonna you're gonna see the big picture. You have it like uh, sort of uh, well, you never can get you know too good. You always can and should learn more, and uh, <laughs> but yeah, with baby steps it works. And that's the thing with like, you know, with, with the Amazon business model itself, and I, I only know like the private label part, but with Amazon as a whole, understanding how that marketplace works, uh, you know, putting time to understanding how the algorithm works, the best seller ranking, how does reviews affect sales, how does sales uh, affect your BSR, how does it all come in with one another? You could be the best business person in the world, and if you don't know how, how Amazon works, you won't be able to make, make a sale. So this is why Amazon is such a complex system, where people think it's easy, but in, in hindsight, it's, it's on a totally the other end of the spectrum. And it's, um, you can be great at branding, you could be great at creating a product, but if you don't know what a, a review represents in terms of the sales velocity and the, the algorithms and stuff on Amazon, then it's going to be incredibly difficult to move forward with it. And uh, that's why people really need to just push the boundaries when it comes to learning this business model as, as much as they possibly can. Like, you get people playing the Xbox and PlayStation, and Master FIFA or Call yeah. of Duty, whatever it is, put that same amount of effort, time, attention and energy into learning this business model, and then if, if you're struggling for investment, if you're struggling for capital to start an Amazon business model, learn as much as you can and then pitch someone the idea. And I think like people just need to step away from themselves in order to actually start something different. Yeah, they definitely do, man, and it's uh, it's overcoming fears, as you know, man, because uh, yeah. one of the reasons why I brought you here, what I wanted to mention, to speak with you here uh, for you know sort of the people who follow me or who are going to see this video, is because I've seen how you develop as a person in those two years that I know you. We have not met in person, yeah, but I have seen you through speaking to you and on Facebook and, uh, we know, you know, we kind of kept contact for a pretty long time now. And I saw the stuff you went through, man, the hard times, you see, that's interesting. And I know you had plenty of them, so did I, and probably the guys watching this uh, conversation now. But the reason why I decided that, you know, you're cool to come and to tell stuff to people here because uh, you are still here and doing this, you know, after two years that I know you. And uh, yeah. that shows something because I know, I was speaking with a friend yesterday actually, man, and we're speaking some Amazon, and I told him, man, I know many people who quit in those two years. Some guys that I met on the way that tried this and that, and many people quit, man, many. Like I don't know why, but yeah. you ask them today, so you still sell, man? And they're like, no, man, it didn't really work, and it didn't really work for me as well. I had like bazillion of problems, triple bazillion of problems, and. But I, yeah. I believe you're here, man, because you're good and you can share some good stuff with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Awesome, yeah. awesome to have you here. <laughs> I think uh, one of the biggest things is it's just it's just accepting that things are not always going to go right. Like there is going to be many turns that go in the wrong direction. There's going to be many rows that lead in the wrong direction. And you know you're going to wake up, and I do I do you know several days a week. I wake up in the morning. I think fuck this. Like you know I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm you know I don't I just don't want to do this. I I'm, I I want to move away. And I want to live in a long long cabin. I want the easy life. And uh, you know. There's always, and it, to me, it's the mental health side of the kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's always this battle going on in my head, and I know other people who go through the same. Yeah. And it's yeah. what we call like the, the the angel, the devil, right? So mm -hmm. I've got this 90% devil all the time in my ear is saying like, Chris, stop! You're not good enough. You're shit. You're not going to be successful. You're never going to achieve your fucking goals anyway. So just sleep in. You know, go to bed all night. Eat shit. Don't go to the gym. Just you know, just carry on the complacent, stagnant life. And then I've got like the, the angel, the 10% power that's saying you can do it, you know, you are successful, you're going to be massively successful, keep going, keep going. And it's, it's the, having that angel factor there that really helps. But, you know, it's, and this is entrepreneur, entrepreneurship on the whole, it is not easy, it's lonely, and it's, um, it takes a fuckload of commitment and dedication to, uh, to push past the hard times because there's more, many more hard times than there are nice. So, and you know, with business on the whole as well, 
the stuff that can interlink with your personal life, the sacrifice with your friends, the family, your relationships with girls, and all of this stuff, it really starts to play on you, it weights on you. Yeah. So before getting into any of this, and we've spoke about this before, it's not so much the Amazon business model, business or entrepreneurship in general, it's getting your mindset right for this is a high risk. You know, this this whole life of what we're living in is is high risk. What you do with Amazon is high risk, what I do in life is high risk, what we do try and cross the road to get to the shop is high risk. If we can accept that we need food from the other side of the street in the shop, no, we could get knocked over by a car on the way, that's high risk. And it's the same with putting financials and capital into Amazon or a startup, that's high risk. And knowing that you have the potential to lose that money will open you up to just relaxing that, yes, it could go wrong, but if it goes right, it could go really fucking yeah. right and it could look all well. So yeah, so you've, got to, you've got to have a strong mindset, a positive attitude, and you just always, when stuff doesn't go right and when the hardships and darkness really does fall, you've got to always remain faithful, you've got to always have the faith, otherwise it's never, it's never going to work. Yeah, and it does appear, man, the darkness, as you mentioned, and I believe each one who does this sort of stuff, uh, he goes through that, right? And it's all about how you deal with that. And obviously, if you, there are tricks for this as well, you know, there are books that are written in this topic, man, how to, you know, to, to go through these periods, uh, because as you mentioned, it can get lonely, it can get really hard, because there's a lot of things to take care of. You're just a 20-something-year-old guy without experience in the beginning. You get into some new sphere, and, uh, but it takes you places, man. It took you places, it took me places. I never thought like two years ago that I would be recording videos for YouTube, and, but with time, I saw that I can influence people in a good way. When a person speaks to me, usually, right, uh, in real life or by phone or whatever, uh, I turn them on and you know they, they start you know moving things they uh, get pumped because I tell them the right things you know I tell them I can feel the person usually and I see that they can do more and most of the people have a lot of potential I think almost every person has it may, even if he's disabled or whatever you've seen like Nick Vucic right the guy without the people fly rockets to space man Elon Musk like Opportunities are insane, man, and we're just that small, and everybody can do whatever he wants, man, and that's just about maybe also listening to the right people, man. And your your things are good, the stuff you share and say sometimes, all right, the blog posts, they're interesting, I do read them, man. It's, it's, pretty, pretty, it's pretty cool, man, yeah, because, yeah, we all go through hard stuff, and yeah. I think, like... You know, one of the one of the smallest yet most significant things that someone can put into practice today in order to create positive change within their life. And by positive change, I mean waking up in the morning and having having sunshine on your face as opposed to like dark and rainy clouds, right? Yeah. So, to me, to me, freedom brings the happiness. Happiness brings the freedom. And what that looks like is having choices within the 24 hours that you that you've been blessed with, right? Having the choice not to go somewhere you don't. Having the choice not to wear a certain set of clothes that you don't feel comfortable in. Having the choice not to hang around with something that someone that you, that, that you possibly don't like. Yeah. Having the choice to work on a passion, on a hobby, on a side project that you really want to bring into fruition in months or years from now. So people, one of the biggest steps that they can they can take, the smallest yet significant, is to start working on something today that they enjoyed doing when they were younger. Whether that was drawing, whether that was writing, whether that was reading, mm-hmm. do more of that stuff. Bring that more into your day. If you're not doing any of it right now, bring in 10 minutes a day. If that's all, something very slight, bring it into your life. Because as you know, and as I know, and hopefully as many others know, who are gonna watch this is, you start doing something small, and that will fucking blossom into something truly beautiful in good time. So just give yourself the time, give yourself the permission to do it right now. Yeah. And the beast, you've got to be, you've honestly got to be selfish. To me, I'm quite a selfish person just because I know the power of selfishness. If you if you want to go somewhere, you've got to be selfish before you can be selfless. You have to. Yeah. You've got to have yeah. love before you can give money. You've got to yeah. have love before yeah. you can give love. All of that stuff. And that's what people need to understand. Smart. Start small. Start small. Because tomorrow is another day, and 
that's what people, again it comes down to having faith, staying positive, being on track. <laughs> yeah, man, good stuff, good stuff. I, I I like this conversation we're having. Can like the last one we had uh, back in the other apartment. I was showing. Now we have moved, man. Uh, it's crazy. We have moved to. Again, one of the things I would like to mention is maybe dreams become reality. Now there are physical things, right? The BMW you have or you had, I'm not sure if you still have it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Physical things are awesome. And no doubt it's awesome to have a nice house. I mean, we're living, dude, it's like a villa here, man. Uh, me and Kirill, my partner, man, he's taking the second floor, I'm taking the first. I, I, I dreamed about this, man. There's a pool outside, man. My mind gets blown each time I wake up in the morning, and I'm grateful for the opportunity and all the people that I've met on the way, man, because everybody, a little talk, a little Facebook message, a little handshake with someone that I met, all these uh, sort of brought me here, right? And there were hard moments, there were people that were not that good, but usually I've, I've met good people throughout my life, and... Uh, <laughs> And if you have these, I, I also write my goals, man, and I visualize them. Uh, I was thinking about living in Thailand many years ago, but and I never stopped thinking about it. You know, you can give up on thoughts as well, you know. So you say like, right, I want something, and then after five days, you forget about it, right? <laughs> but if you keep doing that, it stays there, and then it materializes. Obviously, this is nice, but if you are happy doing that in the process as well, that's the most important thing. And I had a dark period of, of my life, like a six month when I was not me, I was somewhere else, I was really bad. But I went out of this and, you know, it's just a period. But now I'm really grateful for each day, each minute, and because, yeah, yeah man, that's, that's like really amazing. It's, and, you know, I, I always talk, you know, and for anybody that reads my blogs, watch my videos, I talk 90% about the struggle just because like not 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 even the biggest celebrity or the most successful person on this earth doesn't have a week where they where a bad day doesn't form. Yeah. And it's yeah. Um, people need to understand whatever shit that you're going through today does not necessarily mean that shit will fall upon you tomorrow. Yeah. And I always say like there's a great quote and I don't wanna butcher the name, but it says if you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah. And it just means that there's always light at the, the end of a dark and gloomy tunnel, so just keep fucking marching forward and keep moving on. And um, yeah, and bring like like what we just said, like you just said, bring stuff in fr into fruition. For the lap for, for four years prior to getting the BMW i8, which is my dream car, it was my dream car when I was personal training, it was my dream car through throughout everything. There wasn't a day that didn't go past where I didn't think about yeah, that car. Yeah. And um, what I do. I, I, um, I wrote it on a piece of paper, BMW i8, I put the date down when I was going to get it, when I didn't have the car, I stuck it on my laptop every time I was working. Yeah, it works, it works. Yeah, I put a, photo, put, put a photo of that car in my pocket, so whenever I pulled up my wallet, I'd see it. So I was always working towards this thing. And I think I achieved that like six months prior to the actual goal date, which I set. So, you know, it's, it, it, and, now I've had that and it's the experience so yeah. bring those things into your life but you've got to work for it there's no this isn't just mindset and spirituality yeah, yeah. stuff exactly this, you've got to actually put in the fucking work to there do comes it the work yes there comes the if work. it's a little click the magic fingers and oh look there's a fucking mansion on the beach we can move into now I don't like that <laughs> no it's no, years no. years of beating on your craft and bringing it into yeah into fruition yeah, I agree. Man, definitely being on the craft. And uh, Chris, speaking of craft and uh, Amazon, because, uh, well, Amazon is, I, I believe, for me at least, uh, most of my income comes from Amazon, from Amazon FBA. I have five products that are constantly making money. My goal for this year is to launch uh, extra five products, so to get my portfolio to 10 products. And uh, besides that, I get money in uh, consulting people. And I also do listing optimizations, and uh, we also run like an infographic service for pictures. But most of my money, uh, I'd say like 85% uh, comes from Amazon FBA. And uh, I, could you share, because you have much more experience than me on Amazon, uh, just for the people who are watching some 
stuff that you would think that would be good in 2019 on Amazon FBA private label, not arbitrage. I don't know how to arbitrage. I have no idea how this works, man. Like I never tried this model, but because I'm grinding the FBA private label. So yeah, man, yeah. shoot, interesting. So one of the biggest things that I, I foresee that's gonna happen in 2019 and 2020 moving forward with private label is at the moment and it's still happening, not enough people are focusing, and this might sound cliche, but it's, this is the truth. Not enough people are focusing on bringing a product to market that is of exceptional quality, not of good quality, of exceptional quality, that has with the really betrays a strong message. If you don't tap into the emotional, in the emotional side of a market, then you're going to struggle. What does, your, what does your product represent? What meaning does it hold? What message does it have? It's not just all about the product function, it's visuals and the aesthetic and all of that stuff. It's about the message of why someone buys a new product. People these days just want to bring out a rubber spatula and hope it's going to sell 100 units a day. And they still are living in this like, old time century mentality and they need to step out of it. They need to create a great product. They need to include product inserts, which is, should be a staple of your branding now. Uh, exterior packaging, they need to design something that is, that is of, ex just like I said, of exceptional quality. And if people aren't focusing now on social media, especially with the reach that people can get on YouTube, if you're watching this now on Facebook Live, if you're watching from mm -hmm. here, you have to leverage the power of social media. But you, there's, there's a difference of doing that. People can leverage social media and do it wrong. People can leverage it and do it right. To the way that I would do it around this around the brand in which I would recommend you build around a certain industry for the products you want to bring live on Amazon, form form a community around that sector on Facebook, talk about it on YouTube, bring influencers in or on Instagram, all of this stuff. Don't just go and chuck a logo on I'm not sure, like I don't know, a, a leather wallet and then say it's going to be the next best leather wallet in the world. Mm -hmm. You have to really pay attention to what you're doing because as you know, and anybody else that sells on Amazon, and this is the physical product, private label side of things, many people will tell you and you'll see it on YouTube ads, you'll see it on Facebook ads, these people chucking up in huge revenue figures, 1500k a month, 250k a month. Guys, you need to realize that there is there is a high element of risk within this business. Like we were talking about before, this isn't a risk-free business. This is not satisfaction guaranteed if it's not. That's a lie. That's for people to sell their programs and sell their services to you. So you need to do this properly, create something of great quality, of excellence even, so you minimize the risk of failure and maximize the one of success. And that's the way it is. And even if you do maximize it for, for the high element, there's still a chance you'll fail. But yeah. then it just comes down to your resilience, your persistency of what you do after that. So 2019, focus on all aspects more than more than any and more than anything else. Focus on one product by one product. Don't release five. Don't release three. Don't release two at a time. In my opinion, release one. Make it exceptional. And then when you hit your desired sales goal, whether that's five sales a day or 50 sales a day with that product, then you can consider consider releasing a second. And that's where it is. And we've just got a shipment in now for our new products. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, these will be going live in like three days. So these are, these are just test products that I've had sent from China. And um, in this box, I put a status, a status on yesterday, that these two products combined will be doing an estimate, and this is an estimate, it's a guesstimate, $42,000 per month in revenue with 30% net profit margins, two products. Now, we haven't gone on to Alibaba, which is where you get the product supply and manufacturer from people. We haven't just picked them out of thin air. We have taken our time to perfect our product research, looked into the industry, which is pets, by the way, if anybody's wondering. People, again, this comes down to the psychology and the emotional element of things. People will spend more money on pets than themselves. Right? That's just how it is. Also, people will spend loads of money on sports supplements as why it's selling mm -hmm. because they get magical capsule can make them look like Brad Pitt overnight or actually the jury yeah. but these are what you want to look at so also like I said take your time in product research focus on quality and bring something unique and refreshing to the marketplace so basically it is also possible to go through negative reviews you know uh, see how can we perfect it I think I mentioned in one of my videos in order to get reviews 
just to get reviews, yeah? You gotta have exceptional product because then uh, the experience that the buyers are going through, you know, even unpacking your product, uh, the inserts inside, the instructions, you can send them a love card, whatever, like, uh, be creative, and that's what I like about your style, that you get out of the box and you do interesting designs. I saw some of the stuff, and man, you, you are a bomb. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, um, honestly. And there is one thing that I think is crucial. Now, there's a lot of, like, false advertising and scandals going along, uh, around online and in life in general these days. Now there's two main aspects, right, that people need to focus on when it comes to a product and your listing. Okay, so for people who just maybe you're a customer, or maybe you're a seller on Amazon, when you're searching through the Amazon search results for, let's say, a microphone, right, a microphone that you don't you don't know what the brand is, it's a little cheaper than the name brands. So you're looking through and you spot this microphone. It looks great. It looks great. It's at a nice price. So the listing, the listing itself that you're looking to buy from and a cart, that is promising you something that you're you're going soon to receive in your hand in physical motion, right? Yeah. So your, your product listing and the actual product that you receive as a customer or selling as a seller, they have to promise one another. As in, you can't say that your product's perfect on your listing, and then your yeah. product to yeah. not have it not it not represent the quality that you've marked it for on your listing. So both of them have to really be together in perfect sync. Otherwise, refund rates go up, your revenue goes down, and then you can spend less time on it. Thailand features like boba. So. <laughs> Yeah, man, and you're supposed to come here as well at uh, some point of this year. I, I expect yeah. to see you here, man. It's, uh, Thailand is amazing. Yeah. Living here is really nice for everything and making Amazon for sure. For for hustling, uh, this is like the perfect place, man. And uh, yeah, it could, could be nice to see you. And what I wanted to add about the sort of all the, uh, how to say, the product experience that you mentioned uh the branding as well uh yeah it definitely has to be on top it worked for me because uh having a selling listing and having obviously if we take it to the technical part of of doing stuff on amazon good main images smartly crafted titles uh emotional stuff and bullets through the pictures logical stuff to justify that it just works and i would suggest people who are watching to read some stuff that uh, is connected to that because if you wanna I mean you can hire a copywriter to make your listing that's good that's a good way to do it in the beginning but with time you gotta become a copywriter yourself so it's better to study from I don't know which places I've studied from digital marketer uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with these guys I've started copywriting from them uh, email marketing they were amazing and yeah and just uh, books that are you know, uh, motivational books or practical books like cash advertising. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this one, but this one blew my mind. Uh, it's like a little Bible, the, you know, Psychology of Influence by Cialdini, right? Uh, this stuff, uh, you know, there's like Amazon FBA, right? But there is more about it. You know, you got to come into it from different aspects. Some are strong in PPC. Some are really strong in their pictures. And obviously you got to dive inside each part and be better somebody's good at negotiating so they get cheaper prices that's interesting right everything uh, can be like perfected sort of but uh you want to just improve yourself yeah and uh yeah. That, that's a great point this is what we're talking about now a very very small part of that is amazon fba yeah Majority yeah, yeah exactly exactly on the whole and there was um, it was a blog post that I wrote about Christmas, and I came to, um, came to sales copy and stuff. And it's when you're selling a product on Amazon, and let's say it's you know it's coming up to Christmas, you're buying your baubles for the Christmas tree. For people struggling with like marketing aspect of things, and like maybe uh, struggling to visualize like the experience of what their product provides. What you need to focus on is the surroundings and the atmosphere and the emotions that are coming from human beings that can reflect. On, on your product. So what I mean there is, if you're if you're selling baubles for a Christmas tree, easy, right? So you're selling baubles for a Christmas tree. Don't talk about how red the baubles are. Don't talk about their weight, their size, what color string they have. Talk about the surroundings in the log fire that the family are sitting around and they're eating marshmallows and yeah. the golden lab or dog is walking past and the 
the babies, you know, the, the kids are having a great time. They're opening up their presents. That's what you want to demonstrate. The baubles are just a backdrop of the atmosphere that is going on within those images and within the marketing message that you're trying to get across. So the atmosphere and surrounding and the smiles, the emotions that, that are really given off to reflect your product from people, that is what you want to focus on. It's not the baubles, it's not the shine, it's not the weight, it's not the size. It's the atmosphere and surroundings. Yeah, that's smart, man. Emotions first, you know, to tap into the right emotion of people. And that can be also negative emotions. I have, I'm selling uh, one, pro no, two products that my emotion playing there is fear, you know, because I solve a problem that people are afraid of. And what I like to do on my listings, and I'm actually sort of working on a little booklet sort of thing. It's going to be a PDF about product photography and the way you can build a listing because the listing is uh, a val is a sort of a value ladder it's like uh, it's like a funnel in a way right uh, yeah. they call it funnel these days uh, with the click funnels and everything funnels um right but it's interesting to show the problem in the listing okay what i do in some of mine and it so far has been working well you show the problem at the beginning sort of you can do that with uh let's say if it's uh if it's a garlic press, uh, then no, that's that's a bad one. Let's let's take something better. Uh, maybe a, a a baby carrier, a sort of a, you know a bag that uh, they sort of uh, put on the kid and they you know like a little leash kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> you can show a picture of a, of a boy running away from his parents and they're looking for him like this, you know, in the beginning, right? And then you find you show the solution in your listing packed with emotions, like everybody's happy, the child is happy. And then what I like to do is justify it by logic. That means, wow, this is the problem, this is the solution, and here's why the solution is good. That's the part where you can show the, the sizes maybe, or the materials to show that, or maybe comparative marketing to show yourself against your competitors to see where are you better, and then uh, take the features obviously to compare. That's a good way to show features, but definitely, yeah, emotions are king and to be uh, concentrated on them. Yeah, that's yeah. Yes. Big time. And for anybody wondering about like, you know, how do we get reviews? I, I mean, that's for a whole different video. We can talk about five tactics like that in our video, but more so what we've experienced as of lately, we've launched like three products over the last uh, two months. And the conversions have really hit in terms of increased sales when we've got to, to 21 reviews. 21, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, 21, and it's um, magical you know, we number. Hit, uh, 10, 15, and I was like, wow, oh, can we choose the wrong product here? And then it hit about 21 reviews, and then boom, the sales started to really soar. So don't lose faith if you're struggling on those single digital if you're, you know, before 20 reviews, still going, and um, it'll, it'll come out. Yeah, man, uh, th that's a good point. 21 is a sort of a magical number. Uh, but what I would also add to the reviews, that's a big topic, but something people are not really aware of and where you might be getting extra sales is getting top rated. What does that mean? If your product is, uh, it has 4.9 uh, stars and you have over 20 reviews, that's awesome. Uh, you're going to be showing on other listings as the top rated. There's best selling, lowest price, and, and top rated. Top rated is for the niche, the one who has the best uh, stars. Sometimes the algorithm sort of makes uh, mistakes or something, but uh, you, the goal with the reviews is not just having many of them, it's also having them high because you can get top rated uh, on other listings, and that's crazy traffic, man. I made a lot of money from being top rated. And it sometimes sucks when it drops down and then you sometimes you get a, you know, you drop from even from 4.9 to 4.8 and you're, you know, from one review. And it's not always the review itself. It's the top rated that you're losing and you're losing this kind of uh, revenue in sales. And people don't really understand why this might be a little reason, a little gold nugget. And uh, yeah. yeah, man, that's that's uh, yeah. <laughs> throw, Chris, throw something, uh, something. I don't know, just give one thing. We spoke about many things, but uh, just something that people, I know okay. it's uh, it's not the easiest one, but maybe, can it be Amazon Life, whatever, whatever, man, just shoot, that would be interesting uh, because I know you're, you're a wise guy and your wisdom is interesting and it's always good to hear stuff from you. Shoot, man, what I, I think is going to be interesting. <laughs> I, I would honestly say that 
I like to call it the financial foundation, right? So whatever money that you're currently on, from whatever source that you're currently earning it from right now, mm-hmm. and you're looking to get into an entrepreneurial venture, an online business, something or something or something, you have to put down, you have to calculate to a T how much money you need in order to live the life that you really you're telling everybody else that you want to leave, right? So if you want to go to Thailand and you want to move out there for a year, if you want to do what I'm doing, and that's, you know, in six days, and I, I think I've told the whole world now, yeah. so I'm going to, to the New Orleans for yeah. 35 days, I'm going to Kansas City to see a business partner for 10 days, then I'm going to Venice in California for like a month. And how I've done that is simple. I've just worked out how much I need and I'm not here to bullshit anyone or pull the wool over anybody's eyes. What I've done is I've sold my cars, I've moved out my apartment, I've cut all my bills down. So now my, my direct debits, my monthly outgoings are pretty much zero. They're yeah. the end of it. And it's you need to work out how much do you actually need to do this stuff? Do you need 10K or could you do this with one and a half K? Mm-hmm. And I think putting that down on paper and really looking back at it, like the fruition stuff, is super important. I mean, when it comes to traveling and if you want to stay over in Switzerland, I like going to Lugano in Switzerland, right? It's a nice lake there, it's good vibes, coffee and everything. A hostel, a hostel over in Lugano is eight pounds thirty-three a night. Eight pounds thirty-three a night, and you know, from London, I can get over there with forty-six pounds for a return flight. Food over there, a couple of hundred pound, you know, for the week or the month, depending on how you want to live. So really, you can do this stuff on a pretty clear budget, but you need to put it down to actually see how affordable or inaffordable it actually is. And I think that's the key. People need to understand how much they need for the things that they want to do and places they want to go. And I think that, that will really help people. That's a great advice, Chris. And I would like to add a little bit to this so it combines into something cool from both of us, I believe. Uh, before we finish this amazing interview, I would say people need to think more about travels. They need to realize that their the world has 240 countries. I'm sorry, 224, I think. It depends, Wikipedia or... I don't know all the names of the countries. I've never heard all the languages in the world. And I've traveled throughout my life, I think, to about 20 countries so far. Uh, some of them alone, with friends, with family. And that's one tenth, man. And I'm 28 now. Like, <laughs> um, and travels for me were the best uh, teacher and the best money invested in self development. I've traveled a year over Southeast Asia alone. Like, uh, I started uh, so- solo traveling, and my world changed after a year on travels. I only had a backpack, man. I was minimalist. I was I slept in. Uh, cheapest hostels, I went hitchhiking, I went on the cheapest trains around the world and this is what motivated me to mainly, to be honest, like the main reason uh, obviously I want to support my parents, I want to take them you know, off their jobs but for me, honestly, the number one reason was to be able to travel and people should look into that because there is a lot of there are a lot of secrets in other countries with other people, you discover a, a whole new world, so that's something from me and from Chris together. Uh, yeah, man. And I mean, awesome having you here today. You know, it's I, I'm motivated now, man. I'm I'm feeling good. You know, from just speaking to each time I speak to you, I get a good vibe. And I hope you too, man. I hope we, because yeah. You know. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure we'll do it again in the next six, twelve months, and uh, we'll have even more to speak about. So. Yeah, appreciate it, bro. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that's been helpful. Yeah, man. And uh, value to you. So good stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. And I'll uh, drop your uh, Facebook and YouTube down here if people are interested to see your stuff. I do recommend anyone watching to see what Chris does. He is a brilliant salesman, a brilliant teacher. And uh, I only got good stuff from him. No bad things. I wouldn't. uh, Yeah, I'm speaking the truth. And uh, definitely a nice interview. And hopefully in the future we could do it again, man. And I hope everybody liked this uh, video today. It was nice. And man, thank you, Chris. Thank you for coming. And we're probably going to do something in the future. Thank you, man. Definitely. Cheers, bro. See you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. It was me and Chris speaking about Amazon, dropping gold nuggets, a lot of help. Hopefully this 
stuff that you've heard will help you with ideas or whatever about your sales on Amazon, about Amazon FBA itself as a system. I was really glad to help. Guys, if you like it, please like the, hit the like button and uh, comment on this video. Let me know what you think of Amazon, what you think of this little cooperation me and Chris did. And guys, finally subscribe to my channel for more information like that, for good quality videos and good quality information. Thank you and see you in my next one.